Hello, I'm Chetz, the server guy, and today I want to talk about a ZFS server that you can build from either parts that you own or you're planning to buy. This is the low-end version, so it will fit if you have, for example, a home lab with two or three servers, like ESXi servers that you want to connect to and you want to share with Samba and ZFS, so you can use this list to basically either purchase the parts or use them from your current parts. So let's begin the processor. Basically you can use any processor unless you want to use things like 10 gigabit uh, multiple connections like dual ports or quad ports or you want to use NVMe drives. I'll talk about it later. But if you're planning to buy a new PC to build it as a standalone ZFS server, I would recommend to either buy Intel KB Lake, Skylake X, Coffee Lake, or if you want to go with AMD, Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7. Now, if you want to use NVMe drives, these are the sticks or U.2 connection based drives so you'll need those processors if you're just planning to use SATA drives you can use any processor that you want memory 16 gigabyte is the minimum because ZFS as I mentioned in earlier videos is taking half of your memory by default so in 16 gigabyte your ZFS will take 8 gigabyte if you want more cache, so I would recommend to use either 32 or 64, as much as your motherboard can support. ECC memory is preferred because this will give you much better uh, resiliency to memory errors because ECC will detect and correct most of those errors. Uh, AMD processors do support ECC by uh, without any limitations so you can just buy ECC memory I think it's just DDR4 uh, dual channel but you'll have to check that and you can use them Intel uh, doesn't support ECC unless it's a Xeon processor hard disks mechanical drives you can use any mechanical drives but it's it's recommended to start with four and then you can use a uh, mirror uh, mirror configuration just like a uh, raid z1 for example and uh, you'll have two and two uh, so basically uh, you'll have some uh, resilience if some uh, drives will fail so four is a good start you can go up as much as you want as long as you are uh, as you have ports in your uh, raid card and uh, you'll have uh, power connections etc ssd for caching you can use any ssd but the recommendation is to use plp supported ssd which means power loss protection so when you use uh, synchronous writing for example uh, with iSCSI or NFS uh, or any shared file system that uses synchronous writing the PLP support will help you when the NFS or iSCSI for example receive a command from VMware for example to do a sync with PLP, it will do it automatically and fast. Without PLP, you lose speed up to 60% if I'm not mistaken. Any enterprise SSD has PLP support. And the new Intel 800p and 900p drives also supports PLP. Now, if you want to use the Intel 800p or 900p, you'll need a new motherboard and a new CPU from the list I mentioned above. Or else they won't work because they rely on your UFI. Either use Enterprise SSD 
if you're not planning to buy a new motherboard and CPU or use uh, those new drives if you're planning to buy a new motherboard and CPU. Network, you can use any network drives, teaming, etc. But if you're planning to use 10 gigabit dual connection in the ZFS server to connect it to, for example, two other servers, point to point using a, a DAC connection, you'll need PCI 3.0 or else you'll lose speed. So make sure your motherboard support PCI 3.0 if you're planning to use 10 gigabit connection, multiple connection. RAID card. You can use any RAID card that has JBOD mode or it's flashed with IT mode. In IT mode, the card becomes a dumb card and it will allow ZFS to basically access the almost directly or directly in FreeBSD case, for example, to the drive itself and write the data or read the data without any interference from the RAID card itself. Uh, you can use LSI cards, they are very popular, and just you'll need to remember to either buy it or flash it to IT mode. Uh, there are many RAID cards that support JBOD mode. You can use this mode and this mode will basically uh, pass the control to the operating system. It will show all the drives to the operating system so ZFS can work well. Another thing about the RAID cards is that uh, each connection is a mini SAS and your drives are probably will be SATA and the splitter will basically have four connections to each mini SAS. So one mini SAS to four SATA ports. So you'll need to decide which card to buy depends on the number drives you're going to connect. Now you can basically uh, buy, for example, um, a two mini SAS uh, RAID card from LSI or Avago, whatever the name is today. And later, if you want to add lots of drives, you can add the SAS expander, which you will connect to the LSI and then connect to your drive. Next, fans. This server will probably run 24 seven. And the last thing that you want is a jet engine noise. So you'll need it to run quietly. Now ZFS is not taxing your CPU. It will use your CPU uh, most of the time. It won't go above uh, 30 to 50 uh, percent, depends on what you're doing. So you can use um, any standard CPU fan. And for the case itself, you can use, if you're using a PC case, you can use Noctua is recommended because they're, uh, uh, they're fans very quiet. How many fans? On a PC case, most of the time you just need um, in the front two fans, in the back one fan, and uh, your CPU fan, and this should be sufficient. Of course, you can add as much as you want. Graphics card. Uh, if it's an Intel board, you'll have a built-in uh, on the motherboard, so you won't need any graphics cards. If it's an AMD, and you're planning to buy the Ryzen 5 or 7, but not the APU version, you'll need to add uh, something like GTX 1030 or any old card, as long as you have your VGA or DVI or HDMI connection. Basically, any card will suffice. What is not required, if you're having a RAID card with battery backup or memory cache stick, you can remove them because ZFS will take care of everything. What you shouldn't use is the SATA ports on your motherboard. They are connected to the chipset and they are shared and the performance is not that good. Uh, so everyone, uh, you can read everywhere about it. Uh, the recommendation is to add a RAID card and connect all your drives to the RAID card. 
Uh, one thing about the layout, it really depends if you want uh, what is called ZFS on root, which means all your drives will be formatted as ZFS and will be used ZFS for uh, booting, etc. If not, perhaps you should uh, use one or two drives, small drives, for example, for your operating. That's it for today. Please subscribe like if you like this video and i hope to see you next time thank you